Okay, now that we've talked about that order of precedence, let's talk about what happens when we use material boundary modifiers on a flat datum feature. Now, if there's nothing, if I don't show a material boundary modifier, which will go in this little box right next to all these surfaces, then it's always assumed to be at regardless of material boundary. Okay, that's where you say, okay, my simulator is going to progress from the max material boundary which is right here, all the way towards the least material boundary until it makes maximum contact. You know, press up against it as much as it can. It might rotate a little bit when it does that. Whatever it's gonna do, it's gonna do until it's completely pressed against it and I can't rotate it or move it anymore because that means I've gotten rid of that rotational and translational degree of freedom. Um, so secondary or tertiary flat data features they may apply the material boundary or the least material boundary. However, those are never applied on a primary datum feature for a flat surface. Never for a flat surface. Um, there are reasons for that. Mostly it's because if you do that, then you have a wobbly beginning and then everything else is kind of uncertain based on how it, the first part is wobbly. Um, because as we're going to see, um, when we're regardless of material boundary for like the secondary or tertiary data feature, it moves from max material boundary to the least material boundary, like it's doing right here, and it's going to do that until it connects. However, if we were to reference something at the max material boundary, we stop our data feature simulator, even if it's not contacting the piece yet, does not move um, past the max material boundary. You stick it there and you leave it there. This allows this to jiggle back and forth. That's okay. Um, it's not required to make contact when we apply it at the max material boundary. Um, now, why do you want it to jiggle? Like I thought we were getting rid of the jiggle. It's because in real life, if this little tab is smaller at the max material boundary, then it probably has a little bit more wiggle room to move back and forth. And that's okay. That's meant to happen. Um, and that means that the location of these holes, well, they are able to move a little bit more than they would otherwise because this can wiggle back and forth. And that's normal. If this is what's locating these two holes and it can move a little bit, then the holes can move a little bit. And perhaps a part that is functionally correct, even if it's not like perfectly accurate, will still work and will still pass because he did this. But let's talk about that max material boundary for this primary datum. If I did that, then everything is going to be rotating and moving because more or less I'm having my part just floating in the air. It's not really something I can do. I can't have my part just magically float in the air because it can, you know, the max material boundary has been applied. I'm going to stop the max material boundary and it's going to float. That does, doesn't work. So that's one of the reasons that you don't do it for a flat surface for the primary datum. For a secondary or tertiary, it's completely fine. This gives more tolerance and it will allow a functional part to be passed. Oh. So that's it for this time. Thank you for listening. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.